Sharks come to mind when we think of danger at the beach, but scientists in Hawaii are studying an animal that's 10 times more deadly. And if you're not careful, you won't even notice them. Take a look. Waikiki, one of the world's most popular beaches, gets flooded with thousands of visitors every day. But in the dark, before the sun comes up, researchers hunt for a different kind of visitor. The kind with venom. Each month, eight to 10 days after the full moon, hundreds of box jellies rise up from the deep and swarm the shores of Waikiki to spawn before beaching themselves on the sand. Yeah, he's not living. <laughs> Just one of over 40 species of box jellies, these are the cousins of some of the deadliest creatures in the ocean. The objective for collecting them is going to be to take the tentacles off. On average, sharks kill fewer than 10 people per year. The estimate for box jelly fatalities soars over 100. Good? Yeah, I got it. Little was known about these mysterious predators until Dr. Angel Yanagihara came dangerously close to becoming one of those statistics. I've been a lifelong ocean swimmer, and one morning I went out and there were these tiny, clear things on the beach that looked like little Ziploc bags. And I just thought, how bad could it be? I've been stung on the East Coast by jellyfish. Then I decided, well, we're gonna drive on through and, and go swimming. I was an hour plus into the swim, when all of a sudden I felt some kind of needle, uh, pricking but burning feeling. I was wheezing and I felt like my lungs were filling with liquid. It, it was just shocking and, and terrifying. I was convinced that this may be the end of me, that I may be in danger of drowning. Angel barely made it to shore before losing consciousness. I was in an ambulance wrapped with uh, meat tenderizer and vinegar, they said, and saran wrap, and I just thought, now this is not proper care. What, what, what are we doing here? They said to me, well, you have been stung by box jellyfish. It's very dangerous. I was very curious to find out what's the biochemical explanation for, for something that primitive that can cause so much pain. Um, it had my full attention. So that was July 1997. When I did my very first literature search, I was appalled when I read about so many deaths of children and how quickly these deaths occurred. And I really had in the back of my mind, wouldn't it be great if I could make some contribution here and figure out what the biochemistry of this venom is? As their name suggests, box jellies are four-sided invertebrates. They use their 24 eyes to hunt prey and they can even see in color. Box jellies are found all over the world and their sting is far worse than any other jellyfish. They are all part of the phylum Cnidaria. The phylum Cnidaria is defined by this remarkable specialization, these explosive cysts called Cnidae. All of the animals in this phylum use that for both defense and offense. The box jelly sting is one of the fastest known events in biology. Nidae are tiny capsules containing microscopic tubules. When triggered, a barbed tip shoots out like a bullet, piercing through the skin. The tubule follows within microseconds, discharging venom, which starts attacking your blood immediately. The very first thing it does is causes the platelets to rupture. We see white blood cells changing shape. The red blood cells go from being a nice oxygen-carrying cell to being a swollen lipid ghost. So when the blood becomes filled with these agents, a whole lot of systemic symptoms occur. 
When I started this work, methods for producing venom left a whole lot to be desired. They were using freeze-dried tentacles, macerating these in dilute saline, and pronouncing that venom. Well, really? I mean, if you took a dried rattlesnake off the road and put it in a blender with dilute saline, would you call that venom? Angel developed a method to isolate the nidae and cause them to rupture in mass, leaving her with a pure and complex cocktail of dangerous toxins. So what should you do if you're stung? Do a quick search and you'll find dozens of recommended treatments for jellyfish stings. After testing every method imaginable, they ultimately created a line of topical products to treat the sting site. But what should you do if you don't have access to these? Ever been taught to pee on a jellyfish sting? Rinse with water or scrape with a credit card? Well, don't believe everything you hear. It just causes the tentacle to roll down and sting more surface area of the victim. First step of proper first aid should be to get rid of those. Vinegar will irreversibly inhibit them. But rinsing with vinegar doesn't stop the venom already injected. For that, apply heat. 42 to 45 degrees Celsius for 45 minutes. To get the word out, Angel travels to the Indo-Pacific where the stakes are extremely high. Unlike the box jellies in Hawaii, the Chironex here can stop a human heart in less than five minutes. One of the most recent deaths that occurred in an area which is largely a cashless fisher folk village, they had seen a brochure that baking soda would be good first aid. They went out and bought baking soda at great expense to them to try to help the child. Well, the child died, all right? A lot of deaths are occurring. The responsibility of it lays flatly at the feet of every website which had non-evidence-based claims. Credible sources that people confidently rely on for medical advice still dispense false non-evidence-based recommendations. Whether it's due to a distrust of research, a touch of ego, or the assumption that the treatment of stings is a one-size-fits-all science, it's costing people their lives. As a scientist, we need to always be sort of standing by to shred our own pet hypothesis, shred our own bias, shred our own opinions. And we need to be evidence-based, not opinion-based, because in the end, to make contributions to human health, we need that deep understanding and deep knowledge.